Hi everyone. Today we will look at providing security to Snowflake data and explore how we can encrypt, mask and secure the data access. In this video, we will learn about privacy and data protection laws across the world in general, talk a little bit about GDPR, CCPA and laws specific to USA. We will look at a generalized case study of a custom data masking encryption implementation and its challenges. Along with that, we will also explore what it takes to develop such models in-house and then how product like Secupy compares and provides way more features in addition. We will also look at a demo of Secupy integrated Snowflake environment and how it can enhance security of your data in flight and data at rest. Let's get started. Data has emerged as both asset and threat to modern digital age. Thousands of businesses around the globe thrive on customer data use, misuse and abuse. Hence, over 100 countries worldwide have enacted privacy laws to protect data related to users. China has cyber security law. India has its personal data protection bill. Canada has personal information protection and electronic documents act and Japan has Act on Personal Protection of Personal Information. GDPR applies to any firm or institution worldwide holding data related to European citizens or institutions. Organization is expected to identify any data breaches and provide notifications. It is also expected to provide a copy of data they store to anyone who requests it. Data privacy should be part of the design and not optional. Cost of non-compliance or breach could result from a few thousand dollars to millions of dollars in fine and lost customers' trust. Google was an example of an extreme case where it was fined over 50 million euros in May 2018 for the violation of GDPR law. There is no single principal data protection legislation in the United States. Rather, a jumble of hundreds of laws enacted on both federal and state levels serve to protect the personal data of U.S. residents. CCPA or California Consumer Protection Act, which comes into effect from 2020, will give California residents new privacy rights such as right to access the data and deletion of data. It will require significant compliance measures. As discussed earlier, other countries have data protection laws too. All these data protection concerns have to be addressed by every organization that deals with users' data. Let's take a quick look at the basic requirements related to data masking or encryption solution. These are not going to have any extended features but just the basics. Data masking solution has to be performant and should not affect the performance of the overall project or product negatively where it gets integrated. The project should have time allocated to implement such a solution. Most of the projects are already tight on the timeline and this is usually one of the big challenge. Implementation teams should have exposure to data encryption models and insights into implementation challenges of such solutions. It should be a reliable and secure system to mask or encrypt data. It should also be able to decrypt the data as and when needed. Finally, the whole solution has to be developed as a reusable component and should be easy to use across the projects, if not technologies. For this case study, I have averaged out two implementations I witnessed in the last five years and generalized them to quantify the effort involved. Such an effort needed two sprints of development with testing, which was about four weeks in total with four plus resources involved. Resources are expected to have some level of exposure to encryption and organization level best practices. They costed upwards of $65,000. Both the implementations I saw were tightly coupled with the host application and weren't usable beyond the technology stack. Ideally, these should be reusable beyond that single project. Such implementations tend to span out as complete projects and come at much bigger cost. Secupy software platform delivers data-centric security and compliance enabling organizations to discover, monitor in real-time 
anonymize logically delete access to sensitive data based on user roles and customer consent or deletion requests Secupy offers data protection delivery across entire IT ecosystem that covers all major cloud platforms, database administration tools, big data technologies such as Hive, Spark, Niffy, etc. Data warehouse technologies such as Oracle, SQL Server, Business Objects, Teradata, etc. along with Snowflake. Snowflake falls in cloud platform category 2. I'll not go over Secupy architecture in detail but essentially it acts as a layer between your front-end or ETL tools and manage the data encryption. Although this video is around Snowflake and its data protection, the same applies to various other technologies that are that were mentioned in the previous slide. Secupy provides comprehensive data protection and compliance platform. Its dynamic data masking offers flexible and powerful capability to mask sensitive data in real time without affecting the data itself. Secupy provides full control over which sensitive data will be masked for any specified user. It provides complete audit of data access down to the row and column level details. Based on user consent, Secupy can softly delete personal customer data from custom applications even in cases where data cannot be deleted. It offers real-time analysis to detect malicious activity and fraud-based single-user activity, multiple users, and velocity-based comparisons. It can also trigger notifications based on abnormally high risk scores. For this demo, I'm going to use Secupy's pre-configured environment. So I'm not going to go over the setup. I'll restrict this demonstration to Snowflake-related use cases only. It should be working for rest of the technologies in a similar way. This tool has so many features that I'll only be able to cover a handful of important features. Encryption of data at rest, data in motion, behavior analytics, consent processing, and forensics. Let's log into Secupy Management Console. I go to the login that I'm provided for that. Enter email ID or the user ID and password. Login. Then I'm presented with the applications and I'm going to choose Asia Pacific. We will revisit this dashboard and other options in a few minutes. Let's look at configurations we have for encrypting data at rest. We have two ways to set up the system for encryption. First one is the simplest one and is driven by roles. So let's do that. I go to configuration and then role mappings. Instead of creating a brand new one, I will reuse an existing one that is already configured here. One is analyst, which will see encrypted data. The second one is finance role, which will see decrypted data. Analysts will see personally identifiable information in encrypted format to let them search the data. Allowing search on encrypted data is one of the important feature in my opinion. This feature lets you search and use the data even though you will not be able to see or read the data. In one of my previous healthcare client, we were encrypting patient's date of birth. When you mask a date of birth from 5-13-1983 to 8-21-1971 and compute age, it can potentially skew the metrics. Age of the patient was key for tagging patient as baby, juvenile, adult or senior citizen and to determine various diseases that are common for certain age groups. Secupy provides elegant solution to hide data but still be able to search by using where clauses in your queries. We have another role called finance. This role is set up to view the data in decrypted format along with search capabilities. We can also set up advanced configurations and that lets you configure granular details of encryption including geofencing, IP based settings, host based and other parameters can be set up as needed. Let's take a quick look at just a couple of parameters. Table, schema based, IP based, host based or port based, URL based, country based. 
etc. But for now, we will stick to simpler role-based configuration. We will now log into connected Snowflake account with two different users. The first one with Jill, who is an analyst. And I will also open another tab with Jack, who is a finance user. Jack has finance role and data for him is decrypted. Let's run this query. Data for him is decrypted. As you can see, we can see email name and SSN in decrypted format, which is in clear text and readable one. Now we run the same query for Jill, who is an analyst and she has the data encrypted for her. So let's run the query. As you can see, email is encrypted and name is encrypted and SSN is also different for her. Uh, email and names are very clearly visible that they are encrypted and they are not readable. Whereas SSN, uh, it is different number. If we just switch between these two, you can see the numbers are different, but the format is retained. So this was encryption of data at rest. In order to have encryption of data in motion, all you need to do is change the policy uh, such that the encryption of the data is done um, at runtime. Or in other words, you encrypt the data only for unauthorized users and ev everyone else gets the data as is and the data is not encrypted when it is at rest. So it's just a matter of switching the policies and it would work the same. For consent processing testing, let's revisit the configuration and change it. I go back to SecuPy and I go to Config and I have this right to be forgotten. I click on this. If I look at unguard condition, row unguard, unguard condition, I do have something here, reference to forgotten IDs. Let me edit this. So as you can see, I'm referring to value with forgotten IDs. Now, what is this forgotten IDs? If I go to global, here is the forgotten IDs. I edit this. As configured here, this global variable is a string type with a list of strings. I have predefined four IDs listed here, and these are the records to be eliminated. If I go back and look at my queries that I ran, so it will be one of these IDs, one of these four IDs here. So let's search. Okay. So this 11th row is going to be eliminated once I apply this rule. So apart from being strings list, it can also be a uh, external file with a list of IDs if you have a large number of them or it can also be coming from a REST API and uh, your API can provide list of uh, current IDs that are to be eliminated. So for now we will just keep it as hard-coded IDs. Let's go back and also just make sure that we have enabled this. It is not enabled. Let's enable this so that uh, the four IDs that we have, including this 11th record, should get eliminated now. Or in other words, we should not see the contents of these records anymore. So let's run it. So 11th is removed as well as four others, uh, three others. So in total, four of the records are eliminated. The same for Jill as well. So it looks good. So we saw consent, we saw consent processing. Let's explore and uh, find out how data forensics part of this application can help us track down on malicious user and figure out what data is exposed by that user and rest of the details. I go back to SecuPy. I go to the dashboard. Here we see the data risk. This is the 
PII data or personally identifiable data that is exposed and um, based on the risk ranking um, how much of that data is exposed so if we scroll down we can see uh, all the users and and all the queries that they are running so you can see here these were the exact queries that I just ran a couple of minutes ago just one minute ago I ran this and uh, this is the site from which it was executed and these this is the query this is the IP address from which the request came and this is the classification of data that was exposed to the user and if I click on this uh, small disk you can drill down to a lot more details such as how many rows were accessed scraping etc you have full query every detail including the actual data that was exposed actual data a snapshot of the data that was there at that point of time so this is a great tool to figure out who executed the queries and what kind of data was exposed and um, this can be a really important tool we come back to previous screen and we can also go to individual users and find out more about them and their data exposure the transaction score analysis data exfiltration analysis etc by the minute by the hour by the day and week and uh, as always you can figure out every single query that they ran uh, so far you can also filter it by username or certain keywords or by date so it's a great tool to track down on data usage okay just a few other settings are remaining that i would like to show you guys under config i can go to classification here i can globally classify the data columns some of the columns that I would like to track and assign a risk factor associated with it and also uh, kind of give a color to it and every time these columns are utilized inside my query um, on my dashboard or in other places wherever we have uh, the queries listed it also shows these classifications along with these colors marked so that it's very clearly visible that these columns were exposed to the user and in that query again this is a very neat feature they have to classify the data and uh, it's 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 very easy to visually see which ones were exposed so the next one i would like to show you is defining the alerts based on the malicious um, activities or maybe certain data accesses you can set up the alert system here and uh, uh, you can get notified based on various conditions filtering conditions and uh, the kind of uh, um, data that is getting exposed it could be a large number of uh, records or a sensitive information related to certain users you can set all those kinds of uh, uh, alerts so that you can take a proactive measure to track on malicious activities that could be going on uh, with the data so that was about the demo uh, we covered all these features that covers all the topics that we had planned for this video. If time permits, you could always write your own in-house encryption code or algorithm. But in order to have real-time tracking of your data usage, scalable security of your sensitive information and effortless monitoring across your IT ecosystems, you need to have professional tools like SecuPy. Statistics show that over 97% of the visitors of my channel haven't subscribed yet. I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to this channel to get notified about the new videos. I hope this video helped. If it did, please do like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.